Dex, why don't we fire up some appropriate music here? All right. Football. I've got the schedule. We're going to go game by game again. We're going to do this again. Let's try picking the schedule one more time. I think initially Declan and I had them. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Declan had them with like 12 wins. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I think, I think initially I was, like was 12 wins. and four. The second time, 11 and five. And then a home run prediction, 14 and two. So, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm all you know over what? the board here. Declan, you're young. Just like Jeff Gladden, you will learn. Okay. We're actually going to give Declan 14 and two as the one that he's on the record. Thank with. you. It's hilarious. Thank you. I had him 11 and five. Judd had him nine and seven. Appreciate it. So, uh, <laughs> and even I look ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So we all have them 0 and 2 to start right, I'm with. I'm prepared here. to keep track of my predictions too. Okay. Right. 0 and 2 to start with, unless anyone disagrees. We all agree they're 0 and 2 to start. Yes. <laughs> After watching. Are these you games. sure Sunday happened? Yes. Uh, all right. Home against the Tennessee Titans on Sunday. I'll start. That's a loss. They're you guys lose. just keep track of our own records yes. and then at the yep. end. We'll, we'll do. Thank you. Yeah. That'll yeah. make life producer. Tennessee Titans. On That's s- a loss for me. You know what? I'm going to say they rebound and win oh, that wow. game. I, I'm going to say that they come back here. Here's the thing. Here's why. Kirk Cousins is always just good enough. Like in the face of pressure, when the pressure is actually off, he thrives. So I'm going to say that Cousins has a huge game and, and it's actually sort of too late now in a yeah. lot of ways, but that giants game, right? Last year, Kirk Cousins is playing terrible. Oh, he has a great game. So I'm going to say that they, not by a lot, I'm going to say they actually win that game. It's funny because some people might say, well, they're 0-2. Like, if they don't win, the season is really over, and so there's more pressure. But I agree. There's something about starting 0-2 that just frees you up to go and And throw the ball around. And he is, and and if you can take any pressure off of Kirk, he absolutely ordinarily thrives. And I, so yeah, so I actually think it's a win, too. Another another rule of thumb in the NFL too is whenever everyone is going in one direction, chances are the pendulum is going to swing the other way, mm-hmm. and uh, and so that's why when you see point spreads that are like you know Jaguars are seventeen point underdogs against the Patriots, like usually you'll you'll take those points because people are going too far in the direction of blood. So I actually think the Vikings, everything to me screams this should be a bounce back. If there's any fight and any talent on this team, they win this game at home. So I got them one and two here. Uh, all right, at Houston, first weekend in October. <laughs> the loss. Um, Bill O'Brien's a buffoon. He, it, it's going to be the coaching oh, that him. is the sole reason the Vikings win this game. Zimmer <laughs> might be able to out-scheme idiot Bill O'Brien, but also Deshaun Watson's really good. We will get to our buffoon coach of the week can't too wait. later on I, this episode. I think it's unanimous, but I can't wait. I think it's very clear, Crystal um, clear. But I'm going 0-4. They're 0-4 to see. <laughs> all right, Judd? If this game was um, at U.S. Bank Stadium, I might give the Vikings a chance. I, I Look, the Texans aren't great, and Dex is right. Bill O'Brien's a buffoon, but Deshaun Watson's going to beat you. He's just going to find a way to beat you, and your defense does pretty much looks like it stinks. So I'm going lost for the Vikings. You guys are going to be surprised here. I think, I think the Vikings have a little resurgence in the month of October here. I think the Vikings have a little, little juice. Also worth noting, two things about the Texans, well, Number one, they've played the most impossible schedule ever, ever to start the season. They've yeah. played the Chiefs and the Ravens, probably the two best teams in the NFL. Yes. But I feel like they've gotten handled pretty well in both those games. And Deshaun Watson's kind of the one redeeming thing. And I don't know if he's enough. If it was Deshaun but, Watson and like another star receiver like they used to have. But how about Deshaun Watson against this defense? I just I, I think he'll find a way to beat him. So I'm actually going to say they win this game. So you got them two and two. At Seattle, and we got Jay Williams in like nine minutes. So I'll go faster here. At, at Seattle, lost, lost, lost. Yes, Anybody want to speak up? Let's all go lost. We are 0 okay. and 5 yep. in Declan's world. Jeez. Okay, if they go 0 and 5, does someone lose a job? Like, what if they start 0 and 5? Oh. Is Mike Zimmer still the coach going into week six? Yes. Probably is. They're not. I'm telling you, they're not going to fire a, a guy w- with what they are losing revenue wise because of the pandemic yeah. in the middle of this year. They're just not going to do it because they're going to eventually have to, if they do, you can't go out and, and hire a crappy coach, yeah. which would be expensive again. They are not going to double up to pay a coaches. I just don't see it happening. Not this year. Home against Atlanta in week win. six. That's a that, win. That's a win. That is your first Thank win. You, finally. Wow. Big time. First win. Good good vibes going into the bye week in week seven, and then a road game against Green Bay week eight. I'll go loss. It's probably going to be a loss. I would love for it to be a win, but it's a loss. The way Green Bay looks great. Their yeah. offense so far through two weeks. Now I get that they've you played know who looks a really Swiss good? cheese defense or two. You know who looks really good? 
Aaron Jones. The future Vikings quarterback. Aaron Rodgers. He does. One way or the other, the yeah, Vikings are either going to get Trevor Lawrence or Aaron Rodgers in the next two or three years because I, of this. So I don't hate Embrace it. the suck. All right. Home against Detroit week nine. That's a win. Yeah, it is. It's a win. It is. Yeah. That's Maddie ain't beating him. No. I don't know that it's a guaranteed win, but it's not. But I think we'll it's a win. See. At Chicago, Monday night football. A little primetime action that they can't flex out of in week 10. That's a loss now. I'm going to go win. I'm wow. going to go win. I'm going to go say, Chicago, gonna say they're going to get Chicago's a rare win. Chicago's 2-0, man. They're 2-0. and Mitchell has somewhat looked somewhat okay. But with no fans at Chicago, I think actually it's not as a house of horrors. I think they win. They go to 3-6. and six. Could there be fans by then in Chicago? Maybe. There might be a few. Yeah, Rami will be there. Not enough to make a huge difference. No, Rami. Yeah. Poor it's a Rami. loss. It's a loss for me, dog. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's no way this Vikings team goes into like the good good Vikings teams can't win in Chicago. All right, home against Dallas. Three straight home games coming in here. It's a loss. Yeah, it's a loss. It's a loss. It's a loss. Dallas looks pretty rickety. They had to come back from yeah. 20, but yeah, Dallas, they don't look great. You're right. There's a lot of firepower there. It's early though there too. Yeah, they're they're trying to get. And some they new might be good. Here. And they might be good. Home against Teddy Bridgewater in Carolina. Oh, this, they're pretty terrible. That's so a win hard. for the Vikings. I think Judd's right. It's pulling my heartstrings, but I, I think they win. Especially with McCaffrey. Well, McCaffrey might be back by then. I think he's up two to six but he, weeks. He won't be the same though, sure. right? Yeah. Oh, never know. It's November 29th. That's two months away. Yeah, I'll, I'll say be win. back by then. I'll say win. I'll say Vikings win. I think they win that game too. Yeah. All right, home against Jacksonville in week 13. I, I think that's a win. I like Gardner Minshew. He's fun as hell, but I think that's a win for me. I'm going win. I think Gardner Minshew uh, tears him apart, picks him apart. I. I'm going loss there. That's the yeah, type of game. I'm that's the type of game the Vikings should lose now. Yeah, this is and that, that's a good loss too. That's a game we're uh, celebrating it. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, at this point, I well, we'll get to our records in a second, but uh, that game against Jacksonville ordinarily would be that should be an automatic win. This is the type of team that for sure loses that game to Jacksonville though. And Jacksonville's got a couple weapons. And Gardner Minshew, it's pretty darn good. Um, at Tom Brady in Tampa Bay, looks like they started to get a little bit dialed in in week two. That's a loss for the Vikings at Tampa Bay. Sorry. I'll finally change my tune and say they'll lose the game after I've been doubling down yeah. for the Dude, last four or five months. Tampa's way better. And they, and they, you saw a little bit of a preview of what Tom Brady can do with those weapons. So it's a loss. I believe uh, also Antoine Winfield's the number one graded cornerback by PFF through two weeks or wow. one or two. He's been a stud. Didn't need him. Hey, we stud. liked him. Home against the Chicago Bears. Week 15. I'll go win. Are the Bears so the Bears are going to be in this, right? The Vikings. By I want to know, like Declan has them zero and five to start the year, and then just like surging in the second Cause, half because a lot of these teams are bad that they're going to play. Yeah, Chicago though is actually Chicago's looks like bad. they might be in it now, so I'm going to go loss. I think the Vikings are checked out by this point. I agree. Yeah, I'm with Judd. They lose that game okay. at New Orleans on Christmas on a short week. Loss. Loss. Drew Brees looked old last night, but he that's still did. a loss. Loss. He looked awful. He looked terrible. And then on the road at Detroit in a pillow fight, week 17. <laughs> They'll win. That's the tea time game. Patricia's right there. gone by then, or or he the players have completely cashed in their chips from the Lions. That's a win for the Vikings by accident. Dex. And by the way, it's a bad win. I'll go I'll say a loss. I'll say the Vikings lose at Detroit. They'll just close this out. They'll mail it in. Sean Mannion's in by then. Maybe Jameis Winston's in by then. Wow. Maybe another trade I there. I love wow. what you did there, Declan. I love what you uh, did. PFF's Eric Eager had that take, and you can find that on Purple Daily today. So that's going to be great. Forging hot. Um, I think this game, if the season plays out the way that I have here, which is they're five and ten going into that game, I think the game at Detroit really depends solely on do they care? And do they buy into Mike Zimmer still? And who cares more? And I don't know. Because I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think if Patricia's still the coach there, I think the Lions players have, by that point, so firmly given up that the Vikings accidentally care more. And and I will reiterate, it's a bad win. I think the Vikings lose that game. Good. I think they do. But I have them 5-11 and 11 based on the revamp schedule. <laughs> I, I got them 6-10, and 10, I think, now, which I don't like. Oh, I hope it's worse. What do you have them, 4-12? and 12? No, I have 6-10. and 10. Oh, so you have them starting 0-5 and, 5 they and reserved, then yeah. rebounding. Yeah. yeah, wow. That's what they'll do. You called it. That's what they'll do. So, all right. So, you, Damn, so Dex is probably way, right, too. If they finish, let me go look at last year's standings here real quick. Hold this on a is second. not the draft pick I wanted, by the way. I want to know, you're not going to get Trevor Lawrence with, let's say they go with my record, 5-11. and 11. Oh, we can do either one of these. That's fine. You're not going to get Trevor Lawrence. I think Justin, depending on who drafts, like I think Justin Fields probably goes number two. Like, is someone going to... Going to pass up on one of these guys. Uh -huh. So in 2019, the worst record in the NFL 
Cincinnati Bengals were two and fourteen. Man, they're not. I don't. I don't know. They're capable of getting to that. I mean, they look through two weeks like they are, but yeah, here's the are they really going to be this bad all year? I don't know. Two and fourteen, three and thirteen, three twelve and one, four and twelve. So five and eleven gets you maybe the fifth pick. I don't know. Like you might be in Tanner Morgan territory by then. There might be three quarterbacks off. The here's board. The, you got to be worse than so, that. So so. This is going to drive you crazy, Phil, but here's the fly in the ointment of ultimately what would be best for this team. It's what I brought up before. The more you relieve pressure from Cousins, the better he gets, and also the more chances he will take, some of which will succeed. And so the second half could just be uh, basically a fourth-grade recess-looking offense that actually starts to work and scores points because there's no pressure then. It would be you stink. Honestly, like five and eleven or six and ten would be worst. the absolute worst thing like you could it. do this year. The worst thing. You'd rather go eight and eight, and nine and seven, and at least give yourself a chance in the tournament, as they say. Which I don't think. I think that's futile too. Like, there's no way you're beating that Russell Wilson Seattle team right now. Although everyone, the only thing is like everyone is suffering season-ending injuries here. Seattle had a couple big-time injuries. Here's my fear. Here's my fear, guys. Starting with the Carolina game. Look at the opponents. Look at the schedule and then envision the Vikings playing with no pressure. Carolina could be done. Jacksonville. I think Carolina's more likely weird. See, Carolina, though, with a new regime, new coach, new quarterback, I think they're more likely to be like potentially playing their asses off in the second half and Teddy getting better. Yeah, but, he, but I'm telling you, Cousins, what I hate about Kirk is he actually could play some great games because there's no there there to the game itself. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's I'm so with hard you. to I read. Want Give me three wins. Give me two wins. Give me two wins. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll we'll find out. We'll see we'll we'll see what and happens. We'll do it again next week. Those are our. So, <laughs> the, the, so we went from eleven and five, eleven and five or twelve and four with Declan. Yeah. And nine and seven, and we've all essentially. So Judd is the one that has the narrowest. Judd has him going from nine and seven to six and ten, which is probably the most realistic. But Declan and I have literally said, "Whoa, we overshot by five or six wins." Yeah. De- well, De- <laughs> rough, De- De- Declan saying more than that, dude. He was fourteen and two. At that one that point. wasn't a home run, and I was baited into it. I, I'm Phil not just used say it that. against you. Phil used yeah, it I against understand. you. Like I two. dug my own grave. Yeah. I, I understand it. You gave me the, the interrogation. Shovel, the, dirt, the, the interrogation's not going well, Dex. I hopped in. I you hopped in the grave. You didn't ask for a lawyer, man. I understand what happened. What like you know when you go back to like sometimes it's, this is all more simple than we think, and maybe we lost sight of that, and that they lost one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. They lost through either attrition or salary cap, several starters on defense, and they didn't really improve their offensive line. You know, what 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 was really like realistically short of Justin Jefferson being the second coming of Randy Moss right out of the gate, like what okay. was going to get them to the eleven wins that I had? I feel like such an idiot. Yeah, but for the first two <laughs> games, you you just I, I think partially explained the Packer loss. And the the Colts are fine. But you certainly could have been ultra competitive and won that game. Yeah. I like think that Colts game was not a, wow, you played the Chiefs and you had no chance game. Also, I think, you know, and just interacting with tons of people, like Vikings fans, both on Ventline and also just like social media the last couple of days, you know, some of the ones that are still, it's a very, very small number of people that are still clinging to the optimistic angle and trying to find something positive here in the first two games. But the main thread I hear is it's only two losses. You can still rebound. And like you lost two games. It's not like, yeah, but it'd be one thing if you lost on a game winning field goal in overtime and like a pick six in the end zone because Kirk was threading the needle down five with, with the ball, right? Like if it was bang, bang, these games aren't close. And I I know that Packers score kind of says like, oh yeah, it was like kind of a shootout, right? It was like 43 to whatever. Like, no man, that game was not close. It was not competitive. And that game against the Colts, if the Colts weren't just settling for field goals inside the 30 all day, how many field goals did the Colts kick on Sunday? Those could have been touchdowns if Phillip Rivers wasn't like completely my guy, incapable of you know slinging the ball somewhere. So I don't know. If the games were closer, I would say, okay. But they're not. But yeah. they're not. And starting with the playoff loss to San Fran, which is a which was a really good team, you got your ass kicked, which against the Niners, you're like, oh, okay, they're really good. And that's a bad look for the Vikings, but they're really good. And then the Packers, it was like, well, they're not as good as San Francisco was, but you know what? They played pretty damn well, and that's a bad loss, but 
by the Colts loss, you got your ass kicked and you shook your head and said, the Colts kicked your ass. And the answer was absolutely positively.